español y en inglés. Eh, tenemos el gran honor y el gusto muy grande de tener nuevamente con nosotros al profesor Pierre Lyons, que viene del Collège de France. Eh, viene por una visita muy breve, porque tiene muchísimas cosas allá pendientes. Entonces, especialmente se lo agradecemos porque pues es un esfuerzo muy grande que llegó ayer y se va mañana. Realmente es un esfuerzo que, le apro apro a, que nosotros apreciamos muchísimo. Eh, Pierre Lyons eh, estudió en, fue en la École Normale y estudió matemáticas, pero siendo, habiendo sido admitido a matemáticas en École Normale, él estudió las dos carreras, simultáneas, física y matemáticas, porque siempre le interesaron las aplicaciones desde muy joven. Entonces, desde muy joven también empezó a publicar su primer artículo, también es en matemáticas aplicadas, usando técnicas teóricas muy fuertes, y toda su vida ha estado haciendo esto. En 94, él se recibe aquí en el doctorado en 79, y en 94, apenas 15 años después, obtiene la medalla Fields, así es de que es uno de nuestros medallistas Fields. No, sí, es... <risa> ¿Cómo vamos? No me quiero dejar hablar. No me pague. He doesn't want to speak too much about him because it confuses him. So I shall only read uh, some lines of the Bible while he obtained when he obtained this field medal in '94. It says he made truly fundamental discovery, cutting across many disciplines, pure and applied, and his publications are so numerous and varied as to defend any easy classification. Keep in mind that there is, in truth, no control code, theory, or any partial differential equation, nor can there be. The sources of partial differential equations are so many physical, probabilistic, geometric, etc., that the subject is a confederation of diverse sub-areas, each studying different, different phenomena, phenomena for different phenomena partial differential equations by utterly different methods. Perry is the limit in his unbelievable ability to transcend these boundaries and to solve, solve pressing problems throughout the field. So these are the words of the word spoken by Professor Evans in 94, and I can tell you his, uh, for, uh, his continued work after almost 25 after that has proved to be this very true. He continues to use a variety of, uh, of mathematical methods to solve problems in the real world, and he is really amazing in doing so. He has had a very great success in all these branches, and uh, he continues to produce Enormous quantity of mathematics to solve problems. That's all. Ah, <laughs> finally. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, so, so, uh, thank you. Don't believe what you said. You know, she, she is a friend, so that doesn't count. Um, yeah, I, I owe uh, all of you uh, lots of apologies. Uh, first of all, for not being able to stay a long time, uh, you know, very for, just for a very short period of time. But I have uh, difficulties at home uh, with my mother, and uh, I have to teach on Friday. So, I mean, uh, taking into account all those constraints make uh, uh, the trip very, very uh, short. Um, I also apologize for not giving a title. And, and uh, let me confess the reason is that until Essentially, last Friday, I was not sure. Uh, we, I prepared three talks, and I, 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 I didn't know which one to choose. I couldn't choose both. And finally, my computer chose for me because it broke down. So that's a, <laughs> that's a substitute computer, so I, I had no choice. Uh, so it, it didn't break down, it went berserk. You know, we were doing anything. Uh, windows open my computer, you're very, very weird. I mean, that's, it, become, it became an, an independent or autonomous life form. Uh, so anyway, so uh, uh, I'm going to use parts of an old talk and so on. So I apologize for, uh, I would say, three, four people who have uh, listened to a great portion of the talk that I'm going to give. I'm going to talk about uh, minfield games. So most of you probably have no clue what minfield games are. 
I'm not sure that we'll have a much clearer idea by the end of the talk, but that's another matter. Uh, but it's a relatively new uh, subject, except that it has been around for about 12 years, uh, uh, but still, of course, uh, not so well known. Um, Minfield Games, I will explain later what it means. I'm going to start by showing you a little movie. Uh, let me explain why is this movie. Uh, this is a movie which apparently has nothing to do with mathematics. And it was uh, shown to us by, uh, to us meaning the group that works uh, on Minfield Games in Paris around me and especially my old friend, collaborator, colleague and uh, co-inventor of Minfield Games named Jean-Michel Lasserie. So uh, engineers, uh, telecommunications engineers uh, want to use Minfield Games for many, many uh, uh, type of applications. And uh, uh, they showed us this, uh, 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 this little movie that I'm going to show you now. I'm going to try to show you because I don't know this computer. Uh, and everything gets complicated. Uh, OK. Uh, it is here. Okay, so I don't know how to do it on this. So you see what is this? It's a, a short movie showing an intersection in uh, a town in the, in the south of India. And I, I found this absolutely fascinating. So you have cars, buses, uh, uh, mopes, uh, some crazy people are trying to walk uh, across uh, Fortunately, no accident. But what, what's absolutely amazing <laughs> is that it works. <laughs> OK? So now you have this jam, and it's going to solve itself. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. Um, OK. So uh, why do I like this movie? And why do the, 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 the engineers show us this movie? Uh, because it's a good example of uh, decentralized intelligence. You have lots of agents, um, very little coordination, but still, it works. While, as we say in France, if you, are, if you were to put some centralized, between quotes, intelligence, because I'm referring to a policeman, uh, so if you put a policeman in, in, in the middle of an intersection, what we say in France is that everything, everything immediately gets completely blocked. Okay? Uh, so I'm sure in Mexico, in civilized countries like uh, France and Mexico, we share this time of uh, slightly rebellious attitude towards uh, uh, police authority. All right, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I, I don't claim that I'm going to give you uh, mathematical tools to explain that. But I want to insist on two ideas, decentralized intelligence, lots of agents, uh, would certainly anticipate because they don't want to be run over by a bus. Uh, try to optimize because they want to cross the intersection as fast as possible. Interact with all the others and have quite a variety. Okay, so that's a message. Time to uh, begin the lecture. And I'm going to show you some more movies at some point. You will get. Uh, uh, really bored with all that mess, uh, all that mess. So, introduction, uh, really simple examples, and then we'll see. Uh, boss, sir, yes, sir. Uh, what time should I stop? Ten thirty, ten twenty-five, forty. Oh my God! S think of the audience, poor people. I mean, they they have to get stuck here until ten forty and listening to this guy. <laughs> okay, so, okay, let's make it short. Don't listen to her. Although she is the boss, yes, boss, we'll do, I'll do what I want. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, um, in fact, don't read. Don't read what, uh, what, what's written. Uh, it, it's irrelevant. Uh, so, uh, what, what, are, what are MinFit games about? Those are models, new mathematical models. In fact, they are going to lead to all kinds of uh, new set of equations. And in the end, I'll show you uh, something that I prepared without a computer, namely with my hand, then 
<laughs> with my I took a picture with my phone and I show you a, a big diagram of all kinds of models how they are connected all together. But anyway, it's a new class of models uh, which uh, attempt to describe the average in mean field sense, and mean field is an expression which arises in statistical mechanics, statistical physics, and which is uh, a very simple idea uh, that sends average out when you have lots of particles, if you want to simplify the message. And uh, this is a very basic idea in, in mechanics and physics which uh, leads to all kinds of equations from Boltzmann to Navier-Stokes heat equations. All those uh, classical equations of physics and mechanics are indeed mean field equations. You average out uh, the uh, behavior of all the particles, except that now they have this again. So instead of particles, we have agents. Okay? Uh, so it's a mean field theory for in a game situation. Gain thought in the sense of Nash equilibria. Okay, I will remind you what are Nash equilibria on the very simple examples. Um, so it started in the early 2000s uh, 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 with Jean Michel Lassry. Although I should say that uh, uh, there was some independent introduction of a very particular place of MFG models by Huang, Keynes, and Malamé. And then in some sense, whenever you have an idea in, you know, in terms of modeling, you can always find ideas of a similar kind that appeared before. And uh, <clears throat> uh, here I want to mention some very, some particular case which were introduced by economists and or in game theory, which are called anonymous games, uh, and uh, which are discrete time and uh, no, uh, something which is called no common noise. There is also a, a very famous paper by Crusher Smith. So you see that's why uh, that's being mentioned. Let me try to use that. Anonymous Games, Crusher Smith. This is an amazing paper by two uh, top economists. In fact, I have no clue this paper existed, except that if we, we were aware that what I'm going to explain later could be really useful for econ in economics. And uh, so, I, uh, visiting Chicago, I went to the math department, uh, to the economics department in Chicago. I knew the people there. I gave a talk in front of all those Nobel Prizes and so on. And they got excited. And uh, Bob Lucas, uh, who is one of the uh, Nobel Prize winners a long time ago in economics, uh, told me, Pierre Louis, you should look at this paper. I'm sure that they don't know it, but they are doing some infield game. And he was right. In a very complicated case, so they were just explaining some rules, making some Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, and uh, deriving some, con some partial economical conclusion. And uh, this was one of the uh, papers in macroeconomics, which was completely mysterious. And now, really, of course, with those tools, uh, uh, there is much, uh, uh, there is no mystery left. Um, OK, so uh, numerous applications. And let me go back. Economics, finance, social network, crowd motions. I will give you uh, some example. And, Every week now, it has become a fashion, every week I discover people, articles, using mean field games uh, on practical problems. So I mentioned communication networks. There is a huge literature using uh, uh, mean field games on communication networks. Um, last week I discovered that there are, you know, someone told me, you know, there are people using uh, mean field games on cyber criminality. Uh, I googled it, I found immediately 12 references on uh, cyber criminality and midfield games, groups of attackers. So basically, let me go back. Lots of applications. Uh, that's it. In fact, uh, we are. Uh, I was astounded uh, to uh, realize that uh, the DoD in the United States uh, proposed a MURI. MURI is those, are those huge grants they are offering to uh, universities, and the only one in mass is yours on is specifically called midfield games. So. I'm, I have to confess, and uh, I realized there was a, a, a study involving doctors and mathematicians on vaccinations and, and so on and so on. So I could go on and go on in applications. I cannot be sure. So let me, let me be honest. It's fun for me because I've started in some sense this field. It's fun for me to see all those applications. I have no clue. If those applications are seriously done, well developed, or is it just a fashion, and so on. So one should be very careful. Right now, what I can certainly attest is that there is a huge activity 
uh, worldwide in very, very different scientific and technological groups. Okay, so we'll leave this aside. I'll show you some, some movies later on. Uh, yeah, I should certainly mention uh, data analysis and so on. Okay, so uh, let's try to go a little further in the uh, presentation. I already mentioned combination of mean phase theory and motion of Nash equilibria. Um, okay, so Nash equilibria, I'll get back to that later on. But I want to insist on the point in that each player, so basically those models will attempt, and I will, you will see a very simple example later on, will attempt to make a model of the behavior, of the average behavior of a group of people, of agents, of players, what you, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so what are the assumptions? See that first of all, each player is relatively small compared to the multitude. Think so of uh, you know, uh, an economical situation in a country, uh, except so maybe from, uh, from the uh, owner of Telecom uh, Mexico, uh, I don't remember, Carlos Sim, right? That's, uh, okay, okay, maybe he, uh, that would change the situation if he was in the picture or not for the economics in Mexico. But for the normal people, you know, you, they are, in, they are in, you know, taking account or not, doesn't change anything. So uh, most of the uh, agents are small, and there is this idea that we'll be looking at situation unless specifically uh, 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 explained at situations where all the players are s small, anonymous in some sense, to uh, keep, to use the economical uh, jargon. So then basic assumptions, and then there's this toolbox of modeling, and then uh, possibly mass mathematical analysis and so on, is that each uh, player is supposed to be rational. So the word rational is very ambiguous. So it's rational in the sense of economists, which means that they are trying to optimize something. That's what rationality means. This something may be, I want to behave like my neighbors, her behavior. This is supposed to be rational because it's an objective. Okay? This doesn't mean that we are naive. We know that uh, the uh, rational expert, the rational uh, hypothesis is uh, something which is a very crude approximation of reality. So there are various ways. We have investigated uh, variants of model which use, as, a, as one says, limited rationality or bounded rationality. Or uh, even you, you heard about the uh, last Nobel Prize in economics about the irrational behavior. In fact, you can see he is also proposing, which is related to time inconsistencies, and there are ways to try to make models like that, where basically you have uh, you are oscillating between two criteria, oscillating in the sense to be specified. One which is on a very short term period, you want some short term satisfaction, and uh, a more uh, longer term where uh, planning, more planning is involved, and how to combine them. That's since you have two time scales, uh, there is a time inconsistency, so it's not rational in the usual meaning. So lots of variance, I don't want to, uh, to go there uh, now. So rational small agent. And the type of feedback loop you have is that, of course, the community has an influence on each agent because he wants to optimize his behavior in a situation which is created by a community. And of course, if all the community is made of people that have the same type of preferences, otherwise you need several communities, uh, then uh, the, uh, the action that each player chooses will make the community evolve. So community is involved in, term, in defining the action of each individual, and the dynamics of the, co of the community is the uh, results from the individual decisions. So there is this feedback loop that we will see later on. In some ugly equation, okay, lots and lots of models and uh, that's it. Enough blah blah. Simple example, okay? Simple example, so uh, usually I say, uh, to this, if you want to have an idea, is uh, I want to go near the sea to the beach and the question is where are we gonna put our towel? On the beach. So there may be places of interest for French people and I guess that Mexicans are not so different, 
It's a place, it's hot, place where you can have a drink, eat an ice cream, and so on. So that's a place of interest. And, uh, and then there are possibly lots of people on the beach. Okay. So what does that mean? Does this mean that uh, there is a certain space, you have n players, this is a very classical game, uh, which doesn't need our mathematical theory to be solved. People knew that in game theory for a long, long time, uh, the n player uh, situation. So n players choose, uh, each uh, has to choose a position, where to put his towel, xi, uh, according to a certain criterion that depends on the others. Because basically, for, for, you can, you, usually you don't want to put your towel on, at a location where there is already a towel, okay? Just to give an example. So it depends on the others. Uh, so it's a criterion that involves the positions of all the others. What is a mass equilibrium? It's an equilibrium, like a fixed point situation. For uh, uh, if you fix n minus one positions at this equilibrium, the remaining position should be a minimum of its corresponding functional where you have frozen all those guys. So you see, here is a mass definition. Ah, sorry about that. Uh, uh, this is an equilibrium. If whenever you fix an index, uh, the corresponding point should be a minimum of is functional, the ice one, where you have frozen all the positions. So this is the idea, very natural idea for, uh, uh, of Nash equilibria. This is a beautiful, I mean, we are, we, everybody has heard about Nash as a mathematician, but also because of the movie uh, on, on Nash's life uh, uh, some years ago. Uh, but, but Nash wrote maybe a two-page paper. Maybe there was three-page on Nash equilibria. And, uh, it was a little bit of mathematical analysis. And he got the Nobel Prize of Economics for this two-page paper. The notion is simple, uh, but it, it, I mean, someone had to, uh, to think about it. Well, however, lots of difficulty with this notion. Uh, Non-existence and non-uniqueness, uh, crazy equilibria, and so on and so on. The question uh, we are going to raise and we are going to answer yes to the question simpler is when you let the number of, uh, of players go to infinity, could it become simpler? Exactly as if you are interested in the air in this room, uh, if you want to follow all the uh, air molecules to simplify. There are various gases, so you would have to decompose in terms of all the air molecules. Uh, all the atoms, so in the end, if you are just interested in, uh, uh, in that force, uh, which would be natural for fluid mechanics, uh, uh, all the motions of the electrons in, in all the particles and so on, it's, you cannot do that. Okay? Anyway, ODEs, think of the, uh, we still don't know the solar system anybody is stable or not? Or will there be a collision? We don't know. This is a very simple question, uh, mathematically. It's a system of n differential equation, and we don't know. Maybe in hundreds and hundreds of thousands of billions of years there will be a collision. We don't know. And so why? Because uh, you have, uh, n is not huge, and those are all the e's but they are very difficult to track down. One cannot do the mathematical analysis, and numerically there are huge computations which are being made to test as accurately as possible numerically the stability of, the, uh, solar, uh, of our solar system. So just to, uh, to give this example, in quantum mechanics, as soon as you reach three particles, four, let's say four, if you can get, uh, get rid of one, it becomes intractable. So n finite can be, especially if n is not small, uh, can be extremely difficult. On the other hand, if we look at this, uh, uh, at this all, and we want to understand the uh, motion of air in that all, or we want to understand the temperature, how the temperature in that all will evolve in time, uh, we have models for that. They are called heat equation, Navier-Stokes equation, and they're gonna, they're, they are going to do the job. Because somehow, thanks to mean field theory, we were able to create, scientists were able to create mathematical models which gives a good description of what's taking place. So the question is, can one do the same thing in a game theoretical question? And the answer is yes, and that's exactly what mean field games try to achieve. 
So in distinguishable players, you have to make an assumption, it's exactly as in statistical mechanics, statistical physics, uh, if uh, you have uh, n particles and uh, all those particles are extremely different, I'm not talking about the mass, I'm talking about, you know, the properties. Uh, so uh, uh, the, uh, uh, there, there is nothing you can do, there is no simplification. When you write down the equation, you're saying that the medium is homogeneous. When you write down the Navier Stokes equations, you're using implicitly the fact that locally there, there is a thermodynamical equilibrium, etc. So this means indistinguishable particles. Same thing, indistinguishable players. So what does that mean? This means that if we go to the beach, we can change our name tag. Our name tag. You know, suddenly, you will be called Lyons, and that will be called Caballeros, and it won't change anything, okay? So that's this possibility of exchanging the role of two players is exactly what is meant by indistinguishable player. So what, you, what you're saying is that this criterion that depends on, the, on, on all the others depends on my choice, I'm XJ. So that's my choice, that depends on my choice. I want to be near this place of interest, okay? And it depends on all the others. But a view from this guy, a view from my, from my perspective, all the others are, are the same. Yeah, I can exchange a name tag, they don't change anything. So it's a function of one variable, and of course n minus one other variables, but this is a symmetric function of this n minus one variables. And, of course, I play the same role than the other, which means that this function f for, the, uh, for me, is the same as one for her. So uh, there is a single F. So it's, this is more structure. We still go back to the usual difficulty with mass equilibria, still there even with that structure. You may have uh, crazy uh, mass equilibria, non-unique, blah, 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 and uh, doesn't help much. However, it will allow to pass to the limit as n goes to infinity. Of course, you have to change point of view slightly, mathematically, very simple, because uh, clearly here we have a function of n variables. So the setting in which we are looking at the criterion changes with n. So the first step is to try to have some fixed mathematical framework which doesn't depend on s. And the way to do it is to replace points. Uh, when you take a, 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 a bunch of points and you're looking at them, you have the identification. It's really a quotient space, but don't, let's not use complicated words. Uh, uh, we are just looking at them and we may make exchange. It doesn't change anything. You know, exchange the, 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 the tags of all those particles. Then you can replace uh, looking at n minus one point in a symmetric fashion by looking at the empirical density, empirical distribution of those points. In other words, building this probability measure, which is one over n minus one, the sum of the Dirac mass at x j. These contain the same information, except now I have, a, for each n, I have probability measures. I have a framework which is independent of n. There is a, 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 a uh, part of the mathematical theories which exist is about letting n go to infinity, and uh, this is just and explaining why certain functions uh, which are symmetrical in n minus one variables are in fact asymptotically functions on the space of probability measures. Uh, then you move into differential calculus, where how does the differential calculus in Rn is lifted on differential calculus, partial differential equation in Rn are lifted in partial differential equation in, on the space of priority measures. This is just the first step. Just looking at points, replacing by priority measures. And then there is, once you have done that, then there is a whole, uh, you can redo all analysis behind. Okay. Fine. If you admit just this simple change of perspective, uh, then you can prove a theorem which says that all Nash equilibria converge as n goes to infinity to solution of what should be the mean field game for this very particular problem. So let's stop there, for, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's breathe a little bit and uh, look at what this problem is. So the unknown is a probability measure. 
So what this model is going to provide is not a recipe to where to put, uh, uh, Excel, uh, telling you where to put your towel. You know how to do that. You don't need a, any kind of mathematical theory. But if you uh, behave in a rational fashion, maybe we can predict the outcome of all those individual choices. And the outcome will be the repartition of towels on the beach. I don't care about towels on the beach. I'm just giving this as an example. Huh? Uh, uh, um, Okay, so, uh, 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 so that's this M. So the new unknown is a priority measure. Mass equilibria, you fix all the other players. This means M. Because of course, I am among the community, but I weigh nothing in front of infinitely many players. So I can forget uh, the fact that I'm part of it. So fixing all the others is fixing M. In physics, it's uh, ignoring the self-interaction. -interac so I fix M, and then I want to say that uh, 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 all the players have to be minima, a generic player has to be a minimum of the function of the remaining variable. That's the idea of mass equilibria. What is a generic player? Well, that's any X in the support of the measure. So outside the support, M is zero, there are no, pl no, uh, no players. So you see that uh, uh, this is a, 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 a non-standard optimization problem. For any fixed M, you have to maximize, you have to minimize, that's a media optimization problem. You get a set of minima which a priori depends on the measure M, and the equilibrium, the fixed point condition, is that the support of M should be included in the set of minima of this function. Okay. Then, uh, thanks to the fact that uh, uh, you know, priority measures, a set of priority measures is essentially compact if you have the right topologies, weak topologies if you want, and you have general existence and stability results, uh, there is something uh, uh, that I want to, uh, uh, to explain in a minute, which is uh, uniqueness if F is monotone. Okay, uh, uh, I'll go back to that. Uh, also, if the, the force uh, comes from a potential, the force is really the criterion. If it comes from a potential, namely it's a derivative on the space of priority measure of a certain scale of function, then through this global optimization you can yield one solution. So this is typically called uh, uh, decentralization or planning in, in economics, where you can have, you have a game situation, but it turns out to be equivalent to a global optimization. So, the hidden hand of the market and science, stuff like that, okay. Uh, uh, so, there are lots of, uh, but this is a very, very particular situation, as we will see, and it essentially requires to have uh, some kind of gradient form, which is rare. Uh, okay, so, uh, monotonicity, the role of monotonicity. So, let, let, uh, there are the low uh, notations, but believe me, I, I tend to believe that this is very rudimentary. Um, so, uh, uh, let me, let's give an example. So, those are the preferences of the ice player. Location, where does he choose his location? That's how he measures his preferences. And this expression is, uh, will reflect the fact that I want to say, I, uh, uh, I don't like to be in a place where there are too many people, where there are many people, or on the contrary, I like to be in a place where there are many people. Okay? So, otherwise, how do I measure that? That's a little bit of modeling. Well, I'm going to count. So I'm uh, sitting at point uh, sitting at point xi. That's my for my finger. That's complicated. And I'm going to look in a certain uh, in a certain radius, and I'm going to look at the frequency, both in terms of numbers and uh, uh, spatially. Spatially. Uh, so uh, typically, I'm counting the number of people in a given neighborhood. And you see it depends on the type of applications. If you're interested in a towel, so the typical radius would be one, 10 meters. If I'm interested in, uh, uh, if I'm interested in all those things, it may be a different scale. Okay, let's forget that. So uh, uh, this is now a criterion, let's, uh, let's not waste too much time. This is a criterion which depends on endpoints. This is the version on the space of priority measures, f of x, 
And the function of the measure is this G function, I've not yet explained what is G, uh, of the uh, convolution of the priority measure with the uh, normalized indicator function of, of, of that ball. So in particular, if you want to idealize this, you let epsilon go to zero, and you have f of x plus g of m of x. So what is g? So here I'm counting on the people around me. So if g is increasing and I want to minimize, this means that I'm averse to having too many people around me. That's not good. On the other hand, if g is decreasing, this means that, uh, I'm a, as I usually say, uh, normal people tend to avoid very crowded places. But there are abnormal people that really want to be in crowded places. They have a name. They are called teenagers. <laughs> okay. So that's my usual joke here. I mean, uh, I know two or three people that have, yeah, I've heard it about three or four times. Uh, and one is still smiling, the other one not. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so, uh, but anyway, um, so, and G is going to measure by being increasing or decreasing whether I want to be in a crowded place or not. And uh, so, if G is increasing, that's monotonicity, it's an increasing function, there is uniqueness. So, in particular, there is a single equilibrium if everybody wants to adopt its style uh, with some individual preferences and wants to avoid being in a crowded place. There will be a nice repartition. On the other hand, if it's decreasing, there is no new uniqueness. And you can understand that. Because uh, suppose that you, know, you have two places of interest, equal interest. You know, the drinks, the beer is the same, the ice creams are the same. Uh, it's fine. So clearly, and people want to be together. There are two solutions. Everybody is going to group around one point, or everybody is going to group around the other point. That's two solutions. And in order to decide by those two solutions, this is not mean fit games. It's uh, faster and it's something else. You have to, uh, uh, and you can have symmetry breakings and so on. I mean, this is, uh, uh, this is something else. Okay. So I wanted to explain that. This is a very natural. Okay, so this is a very simple example. What do we learn? Forget about powers and so on. We learn that by switching our, our point of view from endpoints to probability measures, the price being paid in terms of having now problems, equations which are set on the, on the space of priority measures, if we are willing to pay this price, then there is a way to set up limits, at least formally, and one can justify this in many cases, uh, although this is hard mathematical work, one can set up models, equations, which are at least partially posed on the space of priority measures. I'm going to show you an, one example of such an equation in the space of priority measures. It's going to be an equation that tell, uh, that uh, it's really awful. Okay, so uh, I don't want you to have nightmare tonight. Uh, to have nightmares tonight. So please be careful when looking. Uh, so uh, <laughs> parental guidance. Uh, <laughs> PG thirteen, I would say. Uh, okay, so. Um, <clears throat> So here is the equation. Uh, I don't expect uh, you to say, oh yes, of course, but you forget a term in the second line, which is plausible, by the way. Uh, but um, uh, uh, I, I will try to explain. So first of all, what I want to emphasize is that we're going to switch to a dynamical problem with a finite horizon t, continuous time and space. The noise is going to be very simple here, brown and noise, uh, and uh, OK. Now we, are, uh, we have uh, each player is submitted to random events called bad and noise, and uh, they are indistinguishable. So what does that mean? This means that there are only two options. It's all, always a combination in such a situation of one common bad and uh, noise and independent bad and noise from one player to the other. There are no other uh, possibilities because of symmetry. That's a trivial observation. Okay. So, uh, in what I'm writing, the new corresponds to the amount of independent noise, while the alpha corresponds to the amount, roughly speaking, of common noise. The value function is now a function that depends on x, I have to explain what x is, m, priority measure, but the state of the community. So, all states are possible, and given a state and a certain objective, I need to understand what is the best possible value I can have for the community. And that's a U function. 
that depends on x. So what is x? x is a bunch of uh, variables which are the description of its player. It could be its age, its position, its wealth, whatever. So you list, that's for model making, you list in x how you're going to describe the state each player is in. Okay? Uh, in particular, I won't do that, but it may be in a situation where x itself is infinite dimensional. Because it could be a mystery, a pass, it could be a, a, a histogram, a, a measure, and so on. In which case, the M is a measure of measures, but I, 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 I don't want to, uh, uh, to go there. Although, uh, I will introduce another point of view which makes this, this type of extension not more difficult. But anyway, uh, so there are a bunch of Laplacian, that's why I'm in motion. Uh, there is something which in X looks like a heat equation, except it, it would be more like a Bellman equation. That's, this part of this is called, uh, is very much reminiscent of hamilton jacobi bellman equation, uh, which means that they are, uh, uh, the controls on drift only, it's a pure Laplacian. The criterion, on, uh, the, uh, only the criterion depends uh, on M, and uh, there is no intertemporal preference rate. I will come back to that later on. So then that's, that would be, if there was no M, that would be a pure Bellman equation, which is optimal dynamical uh, control. Uh, uh, it's well-known equation that corresponds to that situation. Except now, now everything depends on the others, and I, uh, whenever I choose by optimization a certain policy, it will affect how the, uh, uh, the, the group evolves, the community evolves. So that's why you have derivatives with respect to the probability measures, so those are uh, first and second order derivatives. I don't want to discuss it, but this is the effect. Each player chooses, uh, and its action make the, uh, uh, the measure move, and thus the, uh, the best possible value function for this has to move as well, and it moves by reacting with such terms. So you see the two parts of the equations. One is about choosing, and the other is if everybody chooses this, make the community moves. So this is an equation which looks like nothing uh, in terms of uh, equations. First of all, it's infinite dimensional. Second, it has no particular mathematical structure uh, which has been identified, which had been identified previously in the zoology of, of partial differential equations. You mentioned this quote by Craig Evans uh, saying there are so many cases in PDEs that uh, you can't expect to have the global unified theory of PDEs. Uh, that's true, but there are still big classes of PDEs uh, for which you have big unified theories. Um, and this one doesn't fit, didn't fit, and still doesn't fit in any classical uh, branch. Plus the fact it's written down in the space of priority measures and written down derivatives in the space of priority measures is a dangerous game. Okay, let's move on. Uh, okay, so um, I want to mention two particular cases where uh, uh, this infinite dimensional problem gets simpler. One is uh, a, a situation where there are only independent noises, so uh, each player has his own uh, random elements, independent from one to the other, and are not submitted to a common uh, noisy background. In physics, usually when you have interacting particles, uh, they are, uh, uh, they may have independent noises. Uh, in biology, in economics, and so on, there are shocks. There are things that affect everybody. Uh, so this is a very strong assumption, uh, but that's the only case where we can reduce it uh, uh, in a purely continuous fashion, in a purely continuous setting, uh, uh, independent noises. The only case where, uh, uh, where am I? Yeah, uh, where we can write down a system of equation in finite dimension, which is really an integration along characteristics in M2 technical, uh, which combines some kind of Bellman equation and some kind of Fokker Planck equations, the two being really coupled. And it's a forward backward system, and this I want to explain. Fokker Planck is description of the evolution of the, uh, uh, the community. That's forward looking, although I change sense of time here, but forget it. Uh, because we are just following the history of the evolution of the community. 
Bad communication, it's about choosing, it's about controlling, it's about decision making. Uh, decision making, choosing is always about anticipation. There is no way you choose without anticipating at least for some period of time. So this is naturally backward in time. Okay? So that's why you get some uh, kind of heat equations, mm, the extremely nonlinear heat like equation, but one is, going, one is going forward, the other is going backward. It contains many, many classical equations uh, that I wrote down here, but that's irrelevant. Okay, uh, the other example that I want to, um, uh, to describe is the case where the, fine, the, um, the, the variables describing uh, the state of its player is, uh, uh, are discrete. So it's a finite state space. Finite state space means that uh, to describe a player, I'm just having to say that it is, it is in sight I. That's all. Okay, that's discrete. Uh, but there's still M. M is going to be the repartition, the probability density, so the histogram of, uh, you know, how the various people are in, you know, how many are in site one, how many are in site two, and so on. So there's still M. And those are continuous variables. Okay? So uh, the X now stands really for the M in the discrete space. And uh, so, the, uh, in a finite state space, what you have is uh, a system of equation which is, uh, in the uh, terminology, in the PDE jargon, it's called a non-conservative hyperbolic system. Uh, so, essentially, nothing is known, period, uh, on such systems, uh, which has, however, a very uh, particular structure, but that's too technical. Uh, so, it's a non-conservative hyperbolic system. So the only advantage, although it brings a class of equations for which there, are, there is nothing in terms of uh, general results, mathematically speaking, uh, uh, at least it's finite dimensional. Okay, so that's the only interest for the time being. Okay, what do I, what do I want to say now? Uh, I want to mention another point of view. Uh, and that's a very important uh, uh, way to argue is to say uh, that instead of writing down equations on the space of measures, I can write down equations on the space of random variables by identifying a function on the space of priority measures and functions of random variables. I want to look at functions of random variables which depend only on the law of the random variables. So it's automatically a function of priority space. And I can always, always rebuild. So this is an identification. It's exactly as saying if I have a function of two variables, I can easily look at it, uh, and it's symmetric in X and Y, in exchange. I can look at it as a function of two variables, or I can use a quotient space, X, Y, quotiented by the, uh, by the uh, equivalence relationship, and say I have a function on the quotient space. So you lift it to random variables and priority measures, that's exactly the same thing. And this is not a simple, uh, uh, it's, simple uh, the, uh, it's a real analogy, it's more than an analogy uh, with what I had just said. So uh, it turns out that when you do that, the equations become much more like uh, 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 now in an inward space, if you have random variable with second moments, uh, you write down now uh, non uh, PDEs in, uh, in a inward space, uh, which look very much uh, like the hyperbolic system uh, I wrote uh, a minute ago. Okay, look, F, G, let's move here, F, G, right? Except now X is a random variable and uh, U is a mapping from random variables into random variables, which is equivalent. I don't, I, I, I don't want to, 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 to get into that. So, okay, so there, there are ways to look at those things. Uh, so, in fact, this means that when we look at a function, a symmetric function of N variables, we have three ways to look at it. We can look at it as a function of x1, xn, which is symmetric, the usual way. We can look at it as a function of the empirical measure, uh, 1 over n, sum of the delta xi. Or we can look at it as a function of our random variables, at least those random variables that takes only values x1, xn, with probabilities 1 over n. 
That's, those are three point of views which are completely equivalent. And of course, when you lift them as n goes to infinity, you have the, th the, the, the various point of views that I'm mentioning now. And mathematically, from the analysis point of view, uh, if you can work in an L2 space, you have now a linear structure, so you have classical differential calculus. And if the functions depends only on the, on the law, you still keep the compactness of uh, priority measures. So uh, it's almost as if you were working in Rn. Compactness, flat structure. Okay. <laughs> Which explains why uh, the, develop, uh, the theory developed a lot. Um, I should mention that recently René Carmona and uh, uh, Delarue uh, wrote uh, a two book, uh, two, uh, a collection of two books, it's uh, 1,500 pages long, and contains about 30% of the mathematical theory of uh, midfield games, that's my estimate. Just to show you how much the theory has developed in, in 12 years. And they uh, developed much more the probabilistic approach to uh, those uh, questions, which is something that I'm not really addressing. Overview well, and perspectives. What am I doing on time? I'm okay. Um, so instead of doing that, I will finish with two simple examples. So believe me, even if you are a little bit lost in the PDEs, uh, just, uh, or, uh, you can try to wake up now. It's a good idea because now it should be easy. So the difficult part is over. Uh, so, uh, let me try again computer problems. Um, fine, how do I do that? Okay. So I want to uh, mention that uh, uh, one application is about uh, evacuation. In fact, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the people in charge of building the highest tower in the world, worldwide in Abu Dhabi, uh, have uh, given out a contract to a group of engineers uh, for the evacuation of floors of such towers. Because, you know, yeah, when you have those mon monster building, if there is any problem, are, are, are the people going to be evacuated? People use more and more numerical, mathematical models and numerical methods. So MFG are being used. It's a crowd motion. And uh, uh, here I'm going to show so a, few, uh, a few examples that uh, 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 we did just for fun. I mean, it's just a pedagogical. So you think of a movie theater. So you have rows. Uh, you see, you have rows. Uh, so these, uh, uh, the blocks represent the number of people, and you have various rows. And uh, the doors to uh, for uh, to get out are going to be uh, uh, at the bottom. So uh, simple MFG model. You don't think too much about modeling, and. Uh, you look at that, you have little peaks forming at the end of the rows, completely symmetrical evacuation, two doors, nothing much. If you look carefully, you say, well, there are things which are not realistic there. Uh, part of the thing is that you're not, we, one is not taking into account a factor which is that people cannot really tramp on each other. Eh? They cannot walk on each other. And so you have more, much more spikes at the end of the, uh, of the rows, and that's in terms of uh, qualitative behavior, that's much better. And then we made a, a, a more complicated situation, uh, which is uh, a common shock, so common noise, if you want. So um, people know that at a certain given time uh, they will have to get, get out. And uh, the only thing they know is that they can see two exits. But they are going to discover that one is blocked, and they don't know which beforehand, okay? Uh, which is not so unrealistic. This kind of shit, uh, sorry for the expression, happens. Uh, so symmetrical, symmetrical. Okay, it's building up. And uh, so you see, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the exit is, uh, is, of course, the one on the, on the right. So those are just pedagogical examples which shows uh, what is the, uh, how the toolkit can be used. Then you can start to discuss. Then uh, we are still very far away from the movie I showed you in the beginning for the intersection in India. I'm perfectly aware of that. Uh, although the uh, main, uh, 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 we can, 
uh, we, we can obtain the, the, the main phenomenon. I want to show you something, okay, so that's uh, on made uh, with my, except where, where it is. Let's see. So I told you it was on made. Okay, so it took me two hours to do that, and the result is just disgusting, but anyway. Uh, um, okay, so the uh, master equation, Winfield Games equation on space of priority measures, if the number of, uh, if the size of the community is not fixed, then uh, you have uh, uh, bounded measures, not M, or in orbit space. Uh, when it comes from a gradient, uh, you have hamilton jacobi bellman equation on P, M, or H. Um, the two cases I mentioned, independent noise, so the finite dimensional problem, hyperbolic system, forward, backward, uh, midfield games. All this comes from Nash equilibrium as n goes to infinity. In fact, there is a, a, a question in physics which gives rise directly uh, interacting particles uh, with enlarged deviations which uh, give rise to problems of that type. Okay, um, in the potential case, uh, this becomes uh, 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 a hamilton jacobi bellman equation. In the case of independent noise, as a matter of characteristics, it becomes forward, backward ODEs. And if you uh, uh, do the, th now you reverse the order of, uh, uh, you now use independent noise on this, and uh, uh, what you get are forward, backward, completely general Hamiltonian system. There is a bunch of arrows which are called lambda goes to infinity. I want to mention that uh, because it's very natural. Lambda goes to infinity is lambda is a parameter which is going to measure the intertemporal preference rate. So this is going to tell you how much the future counts now. So uh, uh, clearly what happens in a year from now may count, but maybe a bit less than if it were up happening today. So that's the role of discount factors, intertemporal preference rate. When it's very big, it means that the future counts less and less. You become more and much and more, more and more myopic in your anticipations, time-wise. And so when Nada goes to infinity, you become blind to future anticipation and you just react immediately. And that's called, uh, you know, if we are in a finite state space, that would be called an agent-based model. And if you have a continuous system, that would be kinetic models. And uh, so uh, this limit lambda goes to infinity that we worked out recently from master equations gives uh, kinetic stochastic partial differential equations. At Nash equilibria, it becomes n interacting particles. That's good to know. Um, the finite state space, it's uh, ODEs or agent-based model. Uh, you see that all this makes sense. Then that goes to infinity uh, with independent noise. This becomes kinetic PDEs, uh, deterministic ones. Here, there you have noise, Brownian, or, 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 or jump, or whatever. Okay, this is more or less the global picture, which is not of all PDEs, but it contains lots and lots of PDEs which are about the description, always, what do they have all in common, is that you are trying to describe a group of particles, a community of particles, a community, and you have one part of the diagram, the upper, the upper part which is about decision making, and the lower part is we react mechanically, okay? Uh, like physical, physical uh, expressions. Okay, so I wanted to show you, so you see now this global picture of trying to make models for the evolution of a community, uh, how this picture is organized, at least in my mind. Some people may disagree with such type of organization. Okay, time to uh, uh, finish with two simple examples. I won't be talking about uh, big data to try to... I, I'm not going to be ranting against uh, big data today. You, you will escape that. Uh, although I don't say, well, anyway. Um, <clears throat> okay, so many, many things. Uh, two more S examples. 
S stands for simple, uh, but it stands also for silly and stupid. Uh, so uh, I think I, uh, this is an, uh, a very uh, uh, good way to uh, uh, ask you to listen to what I'm going to say now. Uh, one example is at which time will the meeting start? So here is the rule of the game. A bunch of people have to go to a meeting. They don't really know how long it will take to go to that meeting because they have to uh, uh, use transport public, public or private transportation in Paris, for instance. I suppose that Mexico City wouldn't be that different, so you're not totally sure to make it in time. Plus the fact that if you're in a civilized country, uh, the meeting won't start exactly on time. And uh, so, uh, okay, it may, be, it may look good to be there on time because for those who have been on time, uh, it looks slightly bad to be, uh, uh, to be there uh, you know, a little bit late. Okay, so there is a little cost of being late uh, and there is a much steeper cost if you get there after the meeting has started. Then you look, really look bad. When does the meeting start? When enough people have arrived. Okay, like for 80 persons. That's a minifield game. So you translate this in a minifield game situations and you can make numerical computations or more explicit computations. Uh, you have various parameters and even physicists have, made, have uh, looked at it uh, from a, a phase transitions point of view depending on the various parameters and so on. Physicists are now use, uh, working a lot on, on, on minifield games. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's an example. But I prefer being in Mexico, I have to talk, to talk about the OLA. Okay, so the OLA in America, yeah, yeah, in Northern America, in uh, uh, in uh, in the United States, is, is called the Mexican Wave. You know what the OLA is, okay? Good. You know where it started. It's called the Mexican Wave. You should do all that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Even if you didn't know, you should guess. And you're asleep. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Viola, yeah, indeed, this. Huh? You are about uh, 100,000 people. They are not being paid for to, to do something silly like that, and they do it, and then the wave goes on and on in a very stable fashion. It started in Mexico, indeed, during the World Cup. We were discussing with some uh, uh, football experts. Football, we are in Mexico, we're not going to say soccer. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, uh, football uh, experts, so and I already forgot. I mean, it was the World Cup uh, 86. Okay, so first all I was invented here. Um, okay, um, there has been a lot of scientific studies about the Ola. Don't prove much. Now, given any subject, you will find thousands of references on any, uh, even the completely stupid subjects. Think of minifield games. Well, anyway, so, <laughs> uh, the, um, in fact, the, uh, I wrote, if you want to have some fun about uh, statistics and big data, I do recommend uh, reading the article in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is called Chocolate, Cognitive Functions and Nobel Prizes explaining the high correlations between eating chocolate and getting a Nobel Prize. Uh, <laughs> so that's a good example about uh, big data. But anyway, uh, where was I? Mexican wave. Uh, Mexican wave. So it started and those people do it and it works. Uh, so, uh, you know, so there is a spontaneous, uh, you know, synchronization of lots of agents. So it's a very interesting phenomenon, and that's why there is a lot of literature. There are lots of uh, interesting experiments, because if you, uh, the, uh, uh, the OLA always goes clock clockwise, okay? So, uh, in fact, I remember asking uh, uh, some friend from Argentina, asking him, maybe in the southern atmosphere it goes anti-clockwise. Anti <laughs> so, and the guy told me, yes! I got so completely excited, and uh, the day after it said, no, 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 always the same way. Uh, so it has nothing to do with water in the sink and so on. Okay. So, but the, however, about counterclockwise, uh, there was an experiment made during the Olympic Games in Sydney. Uh, so they made an Ola going anti-clockwise. It was stable, going at the same speed. Oh yeah, I forgot to say that. The speed has been measured. It's always the same speed all over the world, okay? So it's a reproducible experiment. So then it makes some sense 
to try to have some kind of scientific explanation. I'm not saying that Minfield gave the right explanation. In fact, what we were really interested was in the propagation of crises of, of shocks in uh, economics or financial situations. Uh, but we wanted to avoid uh, controversies with economists and so on, so we, we, we claim that we are studying others. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, to be happy, stay hidden. Uh, so, uh, the, um, <clears throat> so how does uh, our model work? And I'm going to stop in one minute, 40. So I, I'm obeying the boss. Huh? Uh, I'm just late. Uh, so um, the idea is the following. This is how the toolkit function. So in a given row, we are going to say there are 100 people, that's a lot, and we are going to take a, a priority measure on a row. So uh, you will have two variables, the state in which one people is in the row, the genetic player in the row, and uh, the position of the row along the circle. Okay? That was two state variables. Assumptions, modeling assumptions. Moving is an effort, kinetic energy. You throw that in your Lagrangian. This, uh, position as a cost. Standing, I'm going to be ridiculous, I know, but just a little bit more. Uh, standing is comfortable. Sitting is comfortable. In between, that's not okay. That's uncomfortable. So you have a cost function for position, which is highly concave, and which tells you that in between zero and one are fine. Zero is sitting, one is standing. In between, that's painful. And then, final term in the criterion, I want to be in the same state than my neighbors. Okay, herd behavior. So you measure that, you make a local average, that's it. Okay, so you have two parameters. You uh, crank the, uh, the, tool, uh, the, the, the toolbox, modeling toolbox, you write down a model, you do some mathematical analysis, which is from there, and you make a prediction. If, uh, so you're assuming that all stadiums are basically the same size, if the coefficient in front of I want of the term I want to be like the other is not too small, then there, is a, there exists a unique periodic solution. Okay, it's unique, up to clockwise and anti-clockwise. So you have two solutions if you want. Unique stable. So in particular, it always has the same speed. I'm not saying it's a good model for the other. I'm just saying that I made some assumptions on the behaviors, and then make a prediction which is consistent with what is being observed. Then, if one was, if one were serious about the OLA, one would need to make measurement to try to explain some transitions, why it breaks down, and so on. I'm not serious about the OLA. I just wanted to make, on this example I don't really believe in, uh, um, who knows. Uh, but uh, as a pedagogy example, how one uses the toolkit. Okay, so uh, mathematically, I said there are two examples where you have finite dimensional equations and you have this infinite dimensional problem. In fact, and I showed you with the uh, equilibrium for towers and places of interest, I told you if I don't want to be in the places where there are too many other, uh, where, there are, where there are too, uh, too many people, uh, monotonicity, then uh, problems are, there are unique solutions. And that flew all over the diagram I showed you. It's a complete general feature. In, uh, in some particular models, you may have further uniqueness because you have a specific structure. But at least you have this. And the other piece of information I wanted to mention to close is that at least as a short term, short horizon problem, it's always well posed. There is always a unique, smooth solution. It's like cauchy lipschitz for ODEs, if you want. Except that now it's infinite dimensional, it's a mess, it's complicated, but it's well posed, like uh, ODEs are well posed. So at least we have those things. There are lots of open questions, that's why there are, you know, uh, or many and many uh, mathematicians worldwide that are working on this or that aspect and so on. But just on, the, on one of the big I mentioned, mainly the hyperbolic system, and part of this is my fault because the only material can be found in uh, videotapes of my courses at Collège de France. So I use this excuse not to write this part. And uh, so you, if you want to have some more details about that part, uh, you can download uh, the, uh, the tapes, which are um, usable. 
some of my students have really worked and learned the subject on those tapes, and, uh, and you can watch them. Mm. Well, especially if you have troubles sleeping at time, at night. So I recommend it. Ten minutes, you will be sleeping. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much. <clears throat>